Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. This week, Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me to discuss Anglo-Americans' plans for hydrogen, new technology at Northern's Elon Mine, and Australia's budget surplus. Welcome. Hi, Stephanie. Now, Anglo-American is planning on having a truck run on hydrogen within the next 12 months. This is fantastic news. You know, they are platinum producers, and normally we've been working from the wrong end. We've been talking about fuel cells. You must walk from the other end. How do you get the hydrogen to drive the fuel cells? Mm. Now, what they've been doing there, and it seems that they haven't really had funding to do it, you know, the technical team, but they've done it despite that, is produce a surplus power from your solar panels. Use that p uh, power, that surplus power that you're not using for your mine at the time mm. to uh, turn water into hydrogen and oxygen. It's called electrolysis. Mm. Then you take that hydrogen and you use it to drive your trucks. Now, for how long have they been saying, we in the platinum business clean the air? Well, they don't. Because on the mines, they have trucks that belch diesel fumes. And they've been doing this for ages. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying, look, hey, the penny must drop here. You know, we must get this hydrogen very cheaply from the sun. Mm. And how much can you do in South Africa? We've got great sunlight here. They should be doing it now in Limpopo where they mine. And uh, they say they should have a truck in 12 months that will be hydrogen driven. This should be the start of a whole industry change in South Africa here. You know, this diesel belching must end. It's expensive as well. And it goes against all our climate change principles. And what has been happening with the changing to the track system to allow the hydrogen, they're getting 5% to 10% more output from these tracks. So it's a no-brainer. So hopefully we will be reading about this regularly. From a publication point of view, we want to really enforce this. I mean, mm. it's childish that we don't see that we can get this energy from the sun that can be turned into hydrogen cleanly because mm. you're using sun energy. And that hydrogen can then create mobility cleanly and normally silently as well. Yeah. And you are producing the platinum that actually does that catalysis that, that gives you the opportunity to do this. And we've been working from the wrong end. Have we been talking about fuel cells? No. You must talk about the sun. <laughs> you mm. start with the sun and how you come through and you do this well. And of course, our Sassel should be doing this in terms of their process. The Fisher Trops, they can do the same thing and they must. We must not take an argument from these companies anymore mm. because this is a business case. And they're dirtying the air. Mm. And they're giving people asthma and they're hurting everybody. Come on, guys. Get moving now. And do the same in mining. Even if you force it through. It's a no-brainer. It's mm. cheaper. So what are they waiting for? And you can't have the surplus stored in batteries. Batteries are expensive. It's not proven yet. There are times when you've got this renewable energy coming through. When it's surplus, you're not using all of it. Mm. Why not put it to use? You know, it seems like something that's got to be done. I'm very glad that Anglo are setting off and they're saying, they, you know, the world has missed a trick. They haven't seen this hydrogen. Uh, they've seen it clearly now. And so much South Africa, because we could have a totally new Eskom. I mean, you go there yesterday and, you know, they're living in a past world, okay, because it's all this coal and everything like mm. that. I understand. They've got to fix Eskom now. But that fixing team must be backed up by another team that's saying this is what we've got to do tomorrow guys and it's a business case this what we're doing here is an arm and leg expense what we do here is clean and it's cheaper come on guys we've got the sun we've got the wind let's start moving on this and allow people in their homes to become power stations at the moment you can't because it's the Eskim, this great Eskim won't allow you to put the power back on the grid. Now, so people want their own batteries. It's costing them a fortune to store in the batteries, but they're going to defect from the grid. That's what's going to hurt ex Eskom. Come on. You should be putting up the infrastructure so that when people generate excess power on their roof, they can send it back into your grid. It's clean energy, and that will be a revenue for them, but at the same time, it will keep you in the market. And turning to Northern, the company wants to de deploy tunnel boring technology at its Elon mine. Yes, you know, I mean, we've seen uh, 
uh, nor them not being scared to bring in new technology. This rope conveyor that they've got out in Boysendal was something people thought was a bit uh, futuristic, but they've done it. Now they're prepared to take a, a risk, and it's a, a risk that they share reward and they share the risk with uh, master drilling, which has seen good technology in Italy. It has been used to uh, tunnel bore in, in the Alps, but they need to really modify this and turn it into a sort of a worm-like structure and mm. that it comes in five pieces and you take them uh, you take these pieces underground uh, separately and then you put them together and articulate them so that they can be like a worm going around in uh, in the mine with a big cutting head five meter cutting head I mean it's, it's big and it needs to be flexible it needs to be able to turn mm. on a ticky and things like that so it's still a bit risky they're going to use it at Elance. Elance is a new mine with a lot of prospect there. I mean, Elon, I think it's uh, been quite a, a good buy for, 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 for Northern. They're only at 200 meter level there. There is surface uh, infrastructure that is, you know, for the mine that mm -hmm. they can process materials. So they can now start progressing along that decline to get this equipment into the mine to develop. At this stage, it's not going to mine, mm -hmm. but it's going to tunnel so that you can get to the valuable ore. And, and then this is also rhodium rich ore. And we know that the rhodium price is incredible at the moment. We know the palladium price is good. So it is a prospect. It's a good business case. What they want to do is go three times faster with their tunneling. Now, that's a big number. You know, if you can go three times faster, it could change the face of mining finance. So they're hoping that this teamwork between Northern and Master Drilling, Master Drilling also on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, mm -hmm coming through with a solution here, hoping that they will be able to sort of advance by more than 100 meters uh, you know, in, in a month sort of situation compared to a third of that at the moment. Mm -hmm. So it will be something that people are going to watch, I think. And if it works, I'm sure Northern will spread it to Boysendal. And <coughs> if it works, other mines that need that will, will probably come to the party. But we still got to find a good a good solution to actually mining in the stops where mm. you are in the reef and you're getting the pay so that hopefully will get some faster solutions there as well and lastly australia's resources sector um, has helped generate a budget surplus of 7.1 billion dollars look at this eh? mining puts australia into surplus we could do the exact same thing here what are we doing we are fast asleep Look at the way they've opened the way for the mines to so, so write off their assets quicker so that their balance sheets can be stronger, so that they can produce more tax. They mm. give you more tax because you're letting them run. You're letting them run at a time when there is a bit of an uptick in demand. So you could prepare your mines now. By the time we do this, we could have a, a big uptick in demand for our commodities. We'll be earning foreign exchange, which is so important mm. because if you earn foreign exchange, your currency value get stronger and we know how weak the rand can get and how it can hurt us so you sending out your metals and minerals at a faster pace because your government has seen something that can help that and help the country at the same time why should we sit in a deficit here when our minerals and metals are worth trillions and we can actually do things just book entries to make the whole process work faster so that you can pay more tax and there'll be more surplus. So mm. you just allow these like resources ready to go out, to go out fast, and you draw the benefits. And it's not uh, rocket science at all. And I hope that people take a note of, of what is being done in Australia so that our framework here, straight after the election, hopefully, we can create a framework to set our minds into a faster pace. And in doing that, you create huge benefits for the economy. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly Daily email newsletter.